it, on Israel, where's our choice? You don't get on, it. Yeah, exactly. Like there's so many issues where there is no choice whatsoever. And we're just supposed to accept that well, election cycle after election cycle. And if we try to change it, I know I'm not no, saying don't the accept moment it. We try to change it. It's like, no, 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 no. You got to f- just go along with it. I'm not it's saying the best don't possibly do. I'm not it's saying you have to do. accept it. There are plenty of things you can do with and regards to advocacy want, and political pressure. I'm saying, no, no, no. About, again, no, no, please. Again, wanna, this is this is this is this is political engagement. OK, there okay. are plenty of things that you can do to change the duopoly and change what is politically acceptable. Right, lay it out from let's lay out the chain. How it's I called the duopoly. everything other than who you vote for on election. Day. What is it? Uh, advocacy, uh, pushing funding, arguing with media organizations. You advocacy. But, uh, no, no, hold on. Go to local town hall meetings. Write letters to your local Congress people. Write letters to local people, like mayors, town commissioners, even like local city planning boards. That can do a surprising amount of good. Hey, in the past decade or so, we've seen a recent rise in legitimately progressive politicians. Right now, yes, our government may be broadly pro-Israeli, but America is more pro-Palestine than ever before. And why? Did that just happen out of nowhere? Did that just happen out of the ether? No, it's because people worked and they've been working for longer than any of us have been alive. There have been Palestinian advocates who for decades have had their cries for justice met with deaf ears for decades and only now will people listen and yesterday just yesterday john oliver a really... generally presentable yeah, like media personality presented a fully pro-palestinian take to an audience of millions of people you can do stuff and you know what the consequence of you doing good stuff is that people vote smarter in future primaries and you get better presidential candidates to pick from. Without changing the first past the post system or the way we currently do things on a structural level, it's still always going to be a lesser of two evils deal. Don't you but think it doesn't mean you don't do could, anything. We can save those Palestinians a lot faster if all of those people who say, hey, I want a choice on Israel, were like, I don't know if I'm voting for a Democrat this year. Earn my fucking so, vote. Again, and stop then, with the fairy time bullshit. If all of these people somehow bullshit. magically, you yourself, wait, magically you coordinated, if some, if some, so, listen, in, listen, democracy it, over, over here in reality, well, if some of these people all magically coordinated, if some of these people all magically, destroyed? if some of these people all magically coordinated and they all magically? decided Why on a single, on a single wedge Merlin issue, a magic wand over if this they shit? all decided on a single wedge issue to shift what? their vote, for, on yeah. one wedge issue to another candidate who would have to be several. developed and organized and funded and promoted entirely on this wedge issue, they would then have to have more people voting for them than the entire unified Republican Party. Ergo, what you're talking about has never happened, cannot happen. You are talking about fantasy bullshit. So you're not wait. happy with how tedious wait, reality it, it is. Happens you, every you are cycle. not, Political you are not are made. brave Why do you think for throwing up your arms in the, in the air. Of you are not brave for throwing your arms up in the air, ignoring reality, and only saying you'll lift a finger off or, or, or lift your ass off the seat if some implausibly impractical, historically like unprecedented shit happens not, that no political analyst me. would ever say would happen, but you're like, only for this will I, fucking politics king, get out of my seat and do shit. You're not special. And no, you are. You're special in a class sense. You're more privileged than the people liable to suffer. If this country goes under, I can leave. I'm rich. But there are millions of people in this country who not only don't have that privilege, but they work tirelessly to put the effort in where you think there is no point. Your day it, for work is not is at the election booth. Your day to, for work is, is four years for a before. Politician to have to earn the vote of a voter. That's you, not unprecedented. That's the literally politics whining 101. that you're not being catered to. You have it better than 90% of the people on this planet. We're not talking about me personally being catered to. We're talking about the huge block of people who oppose the genocide yeah. going on in the Gaza Strip and, to be heard. And they're doing yes, and they're the doing work. And their lives the their lives will not get any easier if they just they don't will participate. If How? Those politicians have to spin on that issue to ch- uh, to change on that issue in order to secure those votes. You're just speaking Which, for them you're that, you're, you're privileged if, you're privileged and arrogant that, and if, you're angry and you're using them as a shield Trump you're using them fascism. as a shield so of course these people would have a huger incentive than ever to you're want hiding to behind them 
The math doesn't change. The math doesn't change math for you change. or That's for right. me. Democrats for nobody. can't win if unless you people who are against want, the genocide if still you vote for them. want the world to get better, you do the work between the elections, and during the election, you make the best choice, and then you get your ass back to work. You, like me, spend a lot of our time whining online. That's our jobs. But the difference between you and me is that I don't think I'm special for my abstainiousness from the process that other people have lived and died and bled for, trying to build a world comfortable enough that we could be dipshits in a computer chair. You can do the work. You have to do the work. You do not have a right to complain and pretend that you are smarter for keeping your hands off the work. Well, why, why are There's you people who are bleeding you? and dying right now and we want to vote for the party that's allowing the it to happen? The people who are bleeding and dying right now, the most likely people to bleed and die, the poorest people in this country, those people vote Democrat. The poorer you are in this country, the more likely you are to vote Democrat, because in spite of the fact that your average American poor or rich is a fucking retard, the most, the, 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 the a significant proportion of people understand if you are poor in this country, there is a difference between living under a Democrat and living under a Republican. And you are trampling over that and the work that other people have made, the sacrifices. Do you think, do you think that winning is the hard part of politics? Losing is. Losing is the name of the game. It always has been for every group all the time ever. Most of life is learning yeah. to deal with compromise. Let me, uh, let me ask you a question. Sure. Because I think that this is pertinent. You seem very agitated at the idea that publicly vociferously withholding your vote from a politician can have a special, profound TK. effect on their policy. That's true. You're not special. Like you, you do understand that Biden is less likely to move if democratic voters act like you, than if he acts like us and then, then if democratic voters act like us, right? Well, I advocate for, the ruthless harassment of democratic politicians to get them to demand a ceasefire and you all announced other you announced your things. intent to vote for joe biden before the fucking election was even over the last time they don't yeah and i will continue to they don't care if you threaten to withhold your vote if vote if, yes, if, if voter retention or sorry with uh if, if voter abstainiousness was something that motivated them to change their behavior the fact that this country is like 60% participatory in our federal elections it's, it's would have abysmal. been enough to make a difference at this point. That what matters to them is which political bloc is most likely to respond to positive messaging when it comes to voting to us. So when leftists continuously signal that we are the pickiest motherfuckers in the world and we will act against our own interests to uh, throw our hands up to not vote, they're going to shift more with the moderates. The reason why the Democratic platform shifted to the left after Bernie Sanders normalized that shift left was because Bernie Sanders proved that there was an active, mobilized, young, left-leaning contingent of voters in this country. He proved the existence of a voting bloc that the senile fucks in Washington didn't know about before. They didn't care about them. We need to prove that bloc still exists. We can be rowdy. We can argue. We can threaten... A wide variety of things but my job isn't to posture and i'm not good at theater so the math stays the same with me now i don't have an issue with people who want to reserve the vote right now what i have an issue with is the idea that abstentiousness from this process a lack of participation or or, or willful like disregarding of reality with regards to who we're gonna get at the end of election day these things bother me because there is hope i'm not pitching hopelessness i hope constantly for the work of the people who do stuff in between the elections i just don't like the the idea that the the, the day to take a stand from work to complacency whether you're doing something or not is at that voting booth because i don't think that i think that it's a marginal part of uh of, of political activism